Tesla just delivered over 100,000 vehicles in November and the stock is down 10%. Bruh. I don't get it. I mean, this is the first time that Tesla delivered over 100,000 vehicles in the first in the first time in the six digits. Why is the stock down 10%? Oh, I know why. I know why. Because some people decide to rumor out that for some reason that in December, they're going to cut 20% of a certain model. Now, for what reason? <laughs> Nobody knows. And despite them hitting record numbers, the stock is down over 10%. It just doesn't make any sense. But again, we're in a bear market. Nothing makes sense. And I want you guys to remember that we are in a recession. China is in a big recession. And for them to deliver over 100,000 vehicles in a single month in the middle of a recession is absolutely flipping impressive. But that doesn't seem to matter because the rumors are a whole lot more interesting and more convincing than the data and facts. But in today's video, we're gonna do an update on Q4 deliveries and predicted what the numbers are going to be. This includes Shanghai, Fremont, Berlin, and Texas. And then afterwards, whatever number we get for Q4 deliveries, we're gonna go ahead and see what the stock price is going to be, predict that as well. And we're also gonna take it down 20% of you know Shanghai, the, the rumor that's happening. Let's see the worst case scenario on what could possibly happen. So I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys got your popcorn because this video is going to be absolutely juicy. All I ask for return is a like and subscribe if you haven't already, man. Let's go. So here's my simple production and delivery chart for Tesla. It's extremely simple, straightforward, and right to the point. However, though, I did modify a little bit because a lot of you guys are saying in the comments that, yo, man, you're reducing from deliveries already. Why are you reducing the actual deliveries from the production from the actual deliveries? Well, I listened to you guys. You guys were right. And I modified it a little bit to be more accurate. I believe I deserve a like for that. Now, let's get down to the video. To explain it a little bit for you guys to understand, you guys will see here delivered is 100 171,995. That's because of October and November because it's already been delivered for Shanghai. You will also see that Q4 2022 total production is the same number. Why is that? Well, the data that came out for Tesla that they delivered over 100,000 vehicles didn't mention how many vehicles they produced. Or maybe they did and I haven't seen it yet. If, if they show the numbers, please comment down below. Let me know or tweet at me because now I got Twitter. That's right, guys. I got Twitter. You guys can go ahead and follow me at Peggy. Finally got Twitter, eh? So let's be conservative. In December, they're gonna be doing 2,800 vehicles produced daily. And that's every single day because they don't have any holidays in China because they don't celebrate Christmas or New Year's or anything like that. So if we go ahead and do 2,800 times 31 days, we get 86,800 vehicles produced. Let me know if you guys agree that that's what, that's what they're gonna produce in December. I think this is actually pretty darn good if they could do this. So overall, based on the data and the production that we're doing here, Tesla Shanghai, is going to be delivering almost 260,000, so not delivering, producing 260,000 vehicles in the third, in the fourth quarter of 2022. So, sheesh, that's actually not bad. Now, moving on to Fremont and Fremont, Berlin, and Texas, they, they don't really say much on how they produce and what they deliver. It's just Shanghai that's doing it on a monthly basis, and we are very grateful of that. So, Fremont, Berlin, Texas, come on, man. We Tesla investors are curious. Come on, man. But for Fremont, it seems like for the yearly capacity, they can do 650,000 vehicles production in a single year. So that's not bad. That comes down to around 1,700 vehicles per day. For October, I guess 1,700 vehicles produced daily times 31 days because I don't think there's any holidays there. So we get a total production of 52,700 vehicles. In November, I did the same thing, 1,700, but 29 days, not 30 days because of Thanksgiving. It seems like Tesla, they are closed on major holidays and Thanksgiving is a major holiday. And with that, we get a production number of 49,300 vehicles produced. And for December, I'm guessing for Christmas or Christmas Eve, they're going to be off one day at least. Um, I'm just going to say one day, maybe two days, three days. I'm not too sure but I'm gonna say one day at least and doing 1700 times 30 days, that's about 51,000 vehicles and we get total produced for Q4 for Fairmont is 153,000 vehicles, which is still not bad. Now moving on to Berlin, they stated that in October, they did about 2000 vehicles production producing every single week. So 2000 vehicles being produced weekly comes down to around 285 vehicles being produced daily. And with that, if we do that based on their data for October is about 8,840 vehicles. Because remember, four weeks is in a month and we get the three extra day to complete the month. That's how I got 8,840 vehicles produced. For November, I increased it daily to 330 vehicles being produced 
but for only 29 days because of Thanksgiving. And we get 9,570 vehicles. For December, however, I increased it to 360 vehicles. That's about 2,500 vehicles being produced weekly. So I think that's fair. By December, I mean by now, they should be producing that. And we're getting some reports that they're pumping a lot of cars out in Berlin. So it may be more than this already. We gotta wait for that and see what's up. But that's this is what I'm predicting. 360 vehicles multiplied by 30 days, because again, I'm gonna say Christmas Eve is off or just one day is off in December. We get 10,800 vehicles. Overall, we get a total production for Q4 of Berlin of over 29,000 vehicles, which is absolutely amazing. Moving on to the last one, which is Texas. And there's no news with Texas. The only news that we got recently was that produced their 10,000th car. So it's not really helpful. I mean, it'd be more helpful if you can, if they could tell us how much they're producing on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, that'll help a lot. But to be conservative, I said 200 vehicles producing every single day for Texas in October. Multiply that by 31 days, we get over 6,000 vehicles produced. In November, I said 250 vehicles being produced every day for 29 days, not 30 days because of the one day holiday for Thanksgiving. We got 7,250 vehicles. And for December, I said 275 vehicles being produced daily. And again, for 30 days, not 31 days because of that one day holiday as well. And we get total production in December for Texas, 8,250 vehicles. Overall, Q4 for Texas, we get 21,700 vehicles produced. I'm sure it's more than this, and I really hope it's more than this because we kind of need it. Us Tesla investors are getting crushed, Tesla stocks being crushed. We kind of need numbers to be high as possible. And I know it's very difficult for them to do because we are in a recession, but I got hope, even though it's not a strategy, I got hope. Overall, total production, including October, November of Shanghai, it was around over, was over 440,000 vehicles, which is actually pretty good. Production, excluding October, November for Shanghai is 290,000 over that. Total deliveries. What is the total delivery going to be end year for Q4? Now, this was tricky because prior to this, they usually had a gap about like 1.5%, 2% from the production to deliveries. For recent month for October, let's just take that for example, they produced almost 88,000 vehicles, but only delivered almost 72,000, leaving a gap just a little bit over of 16,000. That's a percentage of almost reaching 20, which is absolutely madness. Not too sure if that's going to happen again this quarter or not. I'm going to be more hopeful and say 10%. I'm sure they will learn what to do and what not to do based on their experience in Q3. So let's do that. 10% of 441,000 vehicles. We get total deliveries of 433,634 vehicles delivered, which is actually not too bad. Anything over 400,000 delivery for Q4 is really impressive. However, though, Wall Street will not say it's impressive because Tesla did say they're going to go 50% year over year. And if this number becomes true, then that means we're going to finish off the year with over 1.34 million vehicles delivered, which is below the 50% year over year deliveries for Tesla. So... I mean, it doesn't mean they didn't grow 50%. They definitely grew more than 50% this year compared to last year. But in terms of deliveries, they did not. And mainly, mainly is because of the shutdown they had back in March or April. They lost about 100,000 vehicles. Otherwise, if that never happened, it would have been easily, probably reaching almost 1.5 million. Easily. Now let's go ahead and put this in the stock prediction chart and let's see what we're going to get. Let's go put this 433.634 and bam, look at all these numbers pop up. I love it. Q1 revenue. Again, this is only for vehicles and FSD. There's no energy here. I probably should add energy here, but I need more data on how they're getting this revenue. We don't have that data yet, so I can't really put it. I mean, I do put it in this 2030 stock price prediction video that includes everything, you know, the bot, Robo taxi, energy, full FSD, Tesla insurance, all of it. So check it out. Don't be disappointed. But with just vehicles and FSD alone, and FSD is only a little bit, not a lot, we get a Q1 revenue of almost $22.7 billion, which obviously, if we add another billion on top of this with energy, is probably going to be above $24 billion. But again, keeping it conservative, 22, almost $22.7 billion, which is actually not bad. It's actually pretty good. But what's even more impressive is the net income for this quarter. Now, this is based on an 18 percent not 20 percent not 25 percent not 30 percent 18 percent margin for the vehicles alone and we get over 4.5 billion dollars in net income which is again reaching the four and a half billion in a quarter that's insane that's crazy if we go ahead and see the last four quarters including this quarter pretty much ending finishing off 2022 as the full fiscal year we get a total revenue almost reaching 80 billion dollars which is absolutely insane because if you look at 2021 it was 54 billion and now we're at 80 billion which is amazing that's more than a 50 percent now the net income is is amazing 13.3 a little bit over that billion dollars 
and net income and profits. Compare that to 2021, I mean, that's that's more than 100% growth and that's absolutely crazy. If they do about 4.5 million vehicles in profit this quarter, that's the EPS of a dollar and 42 cents non-gap. So that's that's amazing. However, though, I don't think we're gonna get this number because the same issue that we had in Q3 from exchange rates from the yen to the US dollar, I mean, US dollar is pretty darn strong right now. So it's gonna take a hit. How much of a hit? Well, I'm thinking about maybe $400 billion right off. That's what I think. Because if you guys look at Q3, it would have been easily over 3.5 billion. But instead, because that exchange rate really hurt them, it was about quarter of a billion dollars that's a lot of money so that brought it down that brought them down big time and they did a billion more this time so 350 to 400 million dollars in losses for exchange does make sense but i'm going to say a whooping 500 million because why the hell not so we do that and we get an eps of you know 1.26 total eps for the entire year of four dollars and seven cents we'll do this breakdown in another video when we're close to the q4 earnings a dollar 26 does seem to be realistic for this q4 coming up but let's go back let's let's go back to the 4.5 billion and sheesh it's still amazing let's get down to the stock price and figure out the pe and if you guys are ready man smash the like button because this is what everyone wants to know when is the stock gonna go back up to be honest guys I kind of want to stay low for some time for the next couple of months because I want to buy more, going even more all in into Tesla stock. So, yeah, just a couple more months being low, I don't mind. But then after that, yeah, we want it to go back up. We want it to go back up. But let's see. Let's see what the PE we need for it to go back up. So right now, Tesla is trading at around 50 to 55 PE. Let's say 50. If Tesla comes out with these numbers with, you know, $4.5 billion in net income, that's going to compress because they're crushing earnings. It's going to compress the PE. But let's say it doesn't. Optimism comes back we can see a PE of 50. And with a PE of 50, hey, look at that. We're over 200 bucks per share. Wouldn't that be a relief to see that? <laughs> I'm seeing the stock going up over 200 bucks. Most likely, because we're in this market, because there's a lot of Tesla FUD, and Elon's not doing anything about it, and Tesla's board is not doing anything about it, and if this continues, the stock is going to continue to go lower. It's just a fact. If there's no buybacks this year, if there's no strong clearance from Elon, if there's no strong FUD coming from news articles that purposely are trying to hurt Elon, if those things don't happen, then we can probably see the stock going even lower. It's just how it is. It has nothing to do with the fundamentals of the company. The fundamentals are, are amazing, better than ever. If that's the case, then we can see a PE reaching a 40 PE. This is ridiculous. And with the 40 PE, that's 169 bucks per share. But if things want to get keep getting worse, then a 35 PE. 148 bucks per share. Sheesh, man. I guess if this happens, man, then the chicken is right. 35p, man. I don't know. And I'm getting a lot of comments on my on my YouTube videos that the stock's gonna go below 100 bucks, and people are betting me against it that it's gonna go 100 bucks. Let's see what that would look like. A PE of 25. 106 p of 24 pe of 23 and a half ah there we go so just a little over 23 and a half of pe will get you a stock price below 100 bucks per share or at 100 bucks per share which is just man if that happens that, imagine the company is growing 40 to 60 percent year over year excluding this year and last year and it's trading at a at a 24 25 pe at this point it's it, it just fun it just doesn't make any sense it becomes so attractive that even i believe warren buffett's gonna buy I don't think he will ever buy Tesla stock, but even at this point, it can go like, okay, the fear is real. Everyone thinks this company is going to go bankrupt. So let's go ahead and buy some shares because people are stupid. But let's try to be more realistic. Let's try to be more optimistic because this is absolutely bearish and just ridiculous. I believe that the stock price, if it reaches that, then we can probably see a P of 45 in the high hundreds because look, it's going to be a record Q4. It doesn't make any sense for them to go any lower than that. It's absolutely does it if things do get better for example elon does address some stuff maybe a buyback is announced maybe the tesla board does come out and you know talks about against all these fud that's going on and they're actually standing up and not letting them not letting news articles hurt them and the fud hurt them then i can see the stock price probably go up to you know 50 55 60 and you guys can see the stock price changing as well now if we somehow go back to a bull market, which I don't think is going to happen for the next six months, six to eight months, then we could easily see a PE around 80, which will be around 338 bucks per share and a market cap over $1 trillion. I think that would be the case. Now, what I think it should be and what I think Tesla is worth today is a PE of 75, around 317, yeah, you can say 314, 315 bucks per share, over a trillion or at least at a trillion. But realistically, realistically, I don't think we're going to see these numbers 
this year, probably mid 2023 or the last quarter of 2023. We're in a, we're in a nasty situation right now. Recession, bear market, it's, it's a tough time. So realistically, I think a P between 50 and 60 makes sense. So 211 to 254 bucks per share. I think that's kind of fair. I think that's that's what I think could happen. So again, realistic price ranges from 211 to 254. Total deliveries from 2022 is going to be 1.34 to million. And year over year growth, if they do this, is about 43%. Now, what if this rumor is true that a 20% cut is actually happening? What's going to happen then? Well, let's quickly go over that. 86 6,800 vehicles produced. Let's uh, subtract 20% of that. That's about 69,440 vehicles produced instead of 86,800. So nice, nice number. That gives you a total delivery numbers of 418 vehicles. It's a little bit over that. So let's go ahead and put that in the stock chart and let's see how that, how that will look like. Boom. So not, mu not too much of a difference. We went down from 254 to 251. We put a P of 50. We went down from 211 to 209. So really not too much of a difference only a few dollars here and there what will make the big difference is the reaction coming out if it comes out much better than expected and inflation is a whole lot less than expected then we can just see sentiment being a whole lot better the stock market is an emotional roller coaster and it's a voting machine in the short term you're gonna be looking at these investments for the next 5 10 15 20 years long-term investments that's what's gonna count there was rumors that they're gonna do around 495 vehicles but that's Reuters who trusts Reuters? They're just highballing it. So if it goes less than that, the stock can tank even more. If they do 495, a miracle. If they do it, it's an absolute miracle. Then that's they'll reach the 50% mark and it'll be over 1.4 million vehicles deliveries. And the stock price obviously will have a good impact as well because that's that's a lot of vehicles. In fact, the net income will be over five billion dollars. That's gonna be insane. Let's see what actually happens in literally less than a month from now. So it's gonna be interesting. So guys, I know it's a very scary time. You're looking at your portfolio, you feel like Wujack, your stock is down 50, 60%. And I totally understand. I've been through this multiple times. This, this is actually my third bear market that I'm through. And I've been ready for this. I've been, I've been ready for this. I've been buying so much Tesla stock recently that I'm cashless. I really don't know how I'm gonna pay my next bill. And yes, I do sleep well at night because this is a long-term game, guys. If you guys bought the stock at an all-time high in 2020, thinking you're gonna it's gonna double again next year, you're not thinking long enough. This is at least a 2030 thing and beyond. I mean, the longer you hold a company like this, the more wealth you're gonna generate. The stock market is a slow wealth generation. Time in the market always beats time in the market, and I hate time in the market. I always bring this example to everybody. Apple in 2007, 2008, it crashed 60% when they released the iPhone. But if you just held on, heck, if you just bought the peak of Apple, before it crashed, you know how much money you'll be up right now? You'll be up 10x, even with the recent downturn, with a 50% crash that we're having now. This is the power of long-term investing. Now, I'm not gonna say that by 2030, 2040, Tesla's gonna be 10x, 20x. Well, actually, I am, I'm believing, I, I, I do believe that by 2030, Tesla's gonna probably 8x, 10x. Well, now it's gone lower. It's gonna be a whole lot more, probably 10x at least. But who knows, we may have a lost decade like we have from 2000 to 2010. Maybe China decides to invade Taiwan. Maybe Russia decides to hit a NATO and World War III starts and that's it. In the short term, it's a voting machine. In the long term, it's a weighing machine. And I choose not to bet against the short term because that's stressful. I'm not a day trader. I'm an investor. Tesla is probably the best investment in my opinion out there today. There's other ones too, but I don't know any other company that's going at 40, 50, 60% year over year. So again, guys, if you're worried that your stock is down a lot, come to the game, man. This is the bear market. Probably going to go down lower. But if you look back 10 years when we're in 2030 and see the stock price below 200 bucks, no, the valuation below a trillion dollars, you're going to be going like, why did I let fear, the FUD, the noise really affect me? I know you may not see it now because this is probably your first bear market you're going through. All you got to do is just look at the history of the stock market. That is all. And if you guys want to know what the stock price would be by 2030, check out this video. This includes everything. Robotaxi, Tesla bot, insurance, energy, and the full FST. Now again, it's pure speculation, so take everything with a grain of salt, just like this video, but you won't be disappointed. Check out some merch, guys. Support the channel by becoming a channel member, and don't forget to subscribe, and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.